saw. Um, why, why did Grant Thornton uh, want to uh, to chair this? Well, it's because we find it a very interesting area. We're having a lot of our clients, and um, I was in a meeting about a week ago with a, a major international global trading company who were talking about smalt, and they're scouring the world from Latin America to Europe, Asia, looking for smart investment opportunities. And we're also doing a lot of work with the UK government and with the energy regulator deck, and it's clearly very high on, on their agenda. Um, so so what, um, what, what is smart and <coughs> what is sustainability? Um, in order to frame the debate, I thought I'd give you my definition. Um, I think uh, if you get six people together, you'll probably get at least seven different definitions. Um, but for me, it's about using ICT and integrated systems to optimize the use of energy cut, and cut the resource cost of the various activities that we all um, participate in every day. And by doing that, to put CO2 emissions, increase energy efficiency, and facilitate the deployment of renewables, and in the current climate, at least but, um, uh, quite important, or at the end of my list anyway, is, is also um, create jobs. It's clearly something the government is quite keen on right now. So, um, here I picked up three particular um, aspects Sure, I can get this to actually. Uh, I was hoping it had a point, but it doesn't seem to have. Okay. Picked up on three particular aspects here um, electric vehicles, um, which are uh, a key part of smart in, in many cities. Um, quite interesting from my perspective because not only are there a means of um, getting people around efficiently but also they can be used as a, um, a method of providing local storage of electricity, which is a key part of small grace in managing electricity generation and in a sustainable and effective way going forward. You can actually have systems whereby um, at night, when someone's parked their uh, electric vehicle outside the house and plugged it in, um, it, it, it gets charged using electricity in the middle of the night, but um, there's not much alternative use for, particularly if the wind's blowing, what else you're going to use the power for. But then the next day, it's still plugged in, and there's a peak in demand, and we all want out of the tea with breakfast. You can actually, um, there are business models where you can take some of the power out of the uh, electric vehicle and use that to boil my kettle and make my cup of tea and then you charge it up again later in the day when the demand is, is not so high. Um, and that can take the top off the demand for electricity and mean you actually need less very expensive new um, generating stations. It also means you can cope better with uh, the fact that wind power isn't always there when you want it. It's not always um, one of the key attributes of smart grids, one of the things that, that make them smart and make them valuable is that they can cope with changes in generation. We're moving from a model where you used to have a small number of big power stations and they sent power in one direction towards the big load centers like London. Now in London if you look around you'll see lots of solar panels, you'll see um, lots of turbines. So the electricity is no, no longer flowing in one direction. It's flowing in lots of different directions, crisscrossing. Um, and the directions of flow can change during the day. And each PV will generate electricity during the day, it won't night. So that's another one of the challenges where smarter grids with more intelligence, with more IT to control them, uh, plays an important role. And it allows us to have more renewables on the system. So that's the, the small IT actually optimizes the grid and helps to manage the local generation to make sure the grid can, can cope with it. And, and you've got other legheads down there at the bottom and plotting and scheming. I guess that's someone like Chris. Um, 
and then also the IT will manage the electronic vehicles and uh, rich communications. Um, and I did a, a bit of rather um, unscientific sort of analysis of what this means in terms of investment and, and business opportunities. And the EU carried out um, a smart group grid project where they looked at and um, forecast investment and they see 56 billion euros being invested in the EU in the smart grid by 2020. And there's already 400 million euros of public funding has gone in, into the area. And they see um, 240 million smart meters in place by 2020. So that gives you some idea of the challenge and the opportunity in the EU. Um, in the US, there will be investment of 334 billion euros by 2030. And in South Korea, 17 billion euros um, by 2030. And I added up all these numbers, and you come to 478 billion of investment um, between now and 2030. Um, public funding that's already been committed is 30, 13 billion euros. And they expect by that 2020, there'll be um, 887 million smart meters out there in, in the world. So it's, it's a big opportunity. It's kicking off now, but it's going to be sustained. We're not going to get 887 million smart meters installed overnight. It's going to take a while. There's quite a lot happening already in the UK. Ofgem and the government are subsidising. There's a number of pilot projects that are, are also up and running. This is a number of projects um, that have, have been running for, for a while. And conscious of the time, I'll just pick on, on two examples. But happy to chat afterwards about others. Low Carbon London, it's a four year programme. It's looking at making the distribution network in London smarter and more efficient. Um, they're putting in lots of PV, um, about 5,000 residential smart meters that allow the consumers to control their electri uh, electricity use to respond to different prices at different times of day. So if electricity is expensive in the morning, you can make sure your freezer doesn't come on then. It just comes on and uses electricity in the middle of the night uh, when it's much cheaper. Um, 100 electronic vehicles and 15,000 charging stations. Well, we're not quite there yet, 15,000 charging stations, because I'm, I know there's one outside of the Department for Energy and Climate Change. <laughs> um, expected capital expenditure of about 30 million um, just in London. The Isle of Wight, quite a small community, have a very interesting community-based program where they've got uh, the community together it's been run by the community with the help of the big utility, SSE. Um, they're looking at hydrogen um, storage to store energy. So when there's excess wind, they'll produce hydrogen. And then when the wind's not blowing, they want energy. They'll use that hydrogen and turn it back into electricity. Again, they're putting in electric vehicle charging points. Um, and they're also looking at um, community buying program for, for energy where you can plug together get cheaper energy and then you can either have a reduction in your bill or you can use that saving to help these community projects move forward. So, just to give you some idea and I'm, I'm not going to go into um, any detail other than to say you see a wide array of different players some names that are immediately recognizable like IBM some that are recognizable, but at least I was surprised by, like Boeing, who were involved um, helping the military in the US in particular around using their energy. And it's obviously very important to them that it be secure, but they also want it to be more efficient. And HP, a lot of, around the home area networking, the business area networking, a lot of startup new um, IT companies who are coming up with new and better software to help consumers and businesses control their energy usage and to get best value out of it. 
and, and quite a few small American startup companies. There's quite a lot of American government funding that's gone in as part of the stimulus package that Obama introduced a couple of years ago. And, and that's, that's helped kickstart this, this sector in the US in quite a big way. And that's sort of the, the bit I want to say by way of introduction. And you've probably all seen the packs that are on your uh, your chairs. Some people will have got our sustainable business report that looks like um, it's hard copies. So it's got a cover like that. Other people will have got um, a small memory stick, which also has a I can get out to cover. Uh, but it's got a PDF. There we go. It's got a, a PDF of the, the report on. So you can plug it into your computer and be more sustainable. <laughs> and they're also, um, our most recent report is looking at sustainable businesses. What are businesses doing to be more sustainable? Um, and that's available on our uh, website. Although the, uh, the, the address is dropped off the bottom of the screen. Um, but if you Google it, it will come up. And there are a few hard copies we've got near the door if anyone's interested. Um, so that. Uh, is, is sort of setting the scene a bit of an interesting